We always invest today, sacrifice today for tomorrow's betterment. But if we don't know what that betterment is, the want factor of what we're really doing it for, we can't win this war, guys. If you had six months to live, what would you do differently with your life? What would you do differently? If your life is not what you want it to be, if you're not living the way that you want to live, if you're not experiencing what you want to experience, if it's not giving you what you want, you've got to ask yourself, what have I sold my soul for? A real man in the dark, when nobody's watching, he putting me in work. A real man, when coach ain't even watching, he's studying film on his own, cause he's, he loves the process. Everybody wanna be a beast, everybody got a lot. Tattoos of lions. Most of y'all think that a lion is who he is because of how ferocious he is when he catch that gazelle, when, when he catch that zebra. If a lion see an animal that's wounded, or a real hunter see an animal that's wounded, what do they do? They don't kill him. Why don't they kill him? He already heard. And they beast. <laughs> a part of being a beast just ain't eating a gazelle. A part of being a beast is the hunts. It's the hunt that they're excited about. Because real lions like to hunt. They love the process just as much as they love the prize. And some of y'all just want to score. You don't like the process. You're not in love with the process. Well, they say when people take the courage to journey into the center of their fear, they find nothing. It is only many layers of fear being afraid of itself. put in 120% every time or you don't put in nothing because listen to me very closely today this opportunity you have it might not be here next year it might not be here the year after next it might not be here the year after that this is the only moment you got and you better take advantage of this particular moment you've hit the wall someplace you've looked in the mirror too many times and haven't smiled you want to change the situation move from where you are the journey is not easy before you start that journey, mentally, you must fuel yourself with the right reasons, the right fuel to sustain the entire journey. Everyone's hot off the start. It does not take talent. You don't have to be talented, right? You don't have to be gifted. You don't have to be the quickest, the strongest. You don't have to be the most intelligent to get to where I am. That's what you gotta do. You just gotta grind, though. You're grind. You might come from privilege. Your daddy might hook you up with a car. He might know people, he might be able to get you a job, but you will not outwork me. You better grow up and get to the point as a man that if you ever get beat, you better get beat by somebody that just, that's just purely more talented than you are. You better not ever get beat by somebody because you beat yourself. Um, I want to introduce y'all to this very simple concept that if you want it, you got to go get it. Some of y'all got this concept of what you want, what you want to accomplish. You know, some of y'all are motivated by broke. I'm broke. I'm stuck. I'm fucked up. I can't do nothing. Some of y'all are motivated by just wanting to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. Other folks are motivated by materialistic things. It's a very simple concept. If you want it, you gotta go get it. And what does that mean? It means that you trying to convince me or anybody else that you want to get it when you party and all week, as soon as you get any kind of money, buying a bunch of shit that you really can't afford. It's time to stay focused. It's time to decide, fuck clubs, fuck partying, 
up trying to fit in and socialize, rub elbows with everybody so people can stop calling you weird. Why are you so antisocial? Because I'm trying to get it. Why are you staying on the basketball court so much? Because I'm trying to get it. Why are you out there practicing in the hot sun when ain't nobody else out there? Because I'm trying to get it. These clubs, these parties, all this shit ain't going nowhere. The more weird you are is a reflection of how committed you are to focusing on your shit, molding and shaping and developing your ideas and your craft so that when it's time for you to make your rounds, you gonna fly. The life that I live, I deserve this life because I worked my ass off to get it. Y'all out here running around creating these, this, this smoke. You did it to yourself. Trying to live up to the hype and create the smoke that you're doing. You ain't doing it. You still got work to do. Stay on that basketball court. Stay on that football field. Fuck all the homies texting and calling and trying to make you feel bad about being so focused. It's grind season, homie. It's not about today. It's about the future. You do the work now. Do the work now. And all of the shit that you could ever want to do for your family, your kids, your loved ones, it's all going to be on a whole nother stratosphere. time to stay focused, man. I don't believe in the word procrastination. Like, I don't really believe in that word. I told a young lady in Australia who told me she was a procrastinator. I said, look, if I told you to meet me here tomorrow at 5 a.m., I'm going to give you $3 million, where would you be? She said, I'm going to be right there at 459, ready to get that $3 million. And I said, so there is no such thing as procrastination. What it is, is it's not important to you. Right? It's not, it's not meaningful for you, to you. It's not, it's not something that's urgent to you. And when something is not urgent, you put it off. So yep, you're in school, yes. You probably are getting grades, et cetera. But if it's not meaningful to you, if it's not important to you, then you're not gonna make it a priority. So what you have to do is find out how can you make it meaningful? How can you make it purposeful? How can, how, how can you make it stick? And when you can find that out, I promise you, you'll get up early, you'll get there first, and you'll do whatever it takes to make that goal a reality. So for me, no such thing as procrastination is a such thing as it's not a priority to you. You said that you were going to graduate this year. You were going to finish college this year. You said you were going to run a marathon, right? This is what you said out of your mouth. All I'm doing is I'm saying, listen to me, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not telling you should do this. You should do that, you should do this. I didn't tell you all year what you should do. But what I did tell you is don't talk about it, be about it. You should be tired, all right? You should be tired of talking about it and you should be at a place where you're doing something about it, all right? The reason why you have not become successful, the reason why you are not like a locomotive, the reason why you are not having success in your life is because every single day you got an excuse. And I need you to do me a favor. I made my last excuse yesterday, my last reason. I came up with my last reason yesterday of why I can't do what I'm supposed to do. And so I need you to do me a huge favor. All your excuses, all your good reasons, everything, every, everything that's keeping you from doing what you're supposed to do, I need you to put it behind you and say yesterday was the last day for that foolishness. Yesterday was the last day to say I don't have enough money to do this. I don't have enough money to go to school. I don't have enough money to get a computer. I don't have, I don't have what it takes. I'm not smart enough, right? I, I don't write well enough. I don't sing well enough. That's why I didn't do my CD. I didn't write my book because I'm not on that level. Listen to me. You better hear what I'm saying. Yesterday was the last day that I want to hear an excuse. It's over with. I was embarrassed. I said, listen to me, no more defeats. No more defeats, man. No more. I was tired of feeling defeated. I was tired of talking about I was going to do it and didn't do it. And I hated the feeling of when somebody asked me, yo, E, where the book? I ain't got it. I was tired of getting beat. I was tired of defeat. I said, I'm going to get it done. 
Every time you set this big goal, you never get it accomplished because you never break it up in manageable pieces. This is it, I'm talking to my procrastinators. You still have time. Don't quit, don't give up, you still have time. You can do it. You can make it happen, but you can't do it procrastinating. You can't do it talking about it, all right? So I just want to go back and recap because I want to make sure you hear what I'm saying. But I, I dare you, I double dare you to do exactly what you said you were going to do when the year started because it's not too late. When you're in school, when you're growing up in life, it actually sort of matters to people how you look. And then it matters to you because it matters to others. Why? Why does it matter how you look? Because if they don't like you, then who will? If they don't accept you, then who will? And I started believing that I was not good enough. I started believing that I was a failure. There will never ever be somebody who people would like or people would accept. And it was so hard, man. I thought to myself, I, you know, I can't go on, the, go on the soccer field like everybody else. And I can't ride my bike and I can't skateboard and all these sort of things. And I started getting depressed. I thought, what kind of purpose do I have to live? I mean, do you, are, are you just here to live to die? I mean, is there not a purpose for me? Is there not a purpose in life? There are some things in life that are out of your control that you can't change and you've got to live with. The choice that we have though is either to give up or keep on going. I want to ask you, what are you going to believe? Are you going to believe in yourself? Are you going to believe everybody else's judgment on you? Are you going to believe people when they say that you're a failure and no one really likes you, no one really cares about you? People don't even look you in the eye. People ask you how you are, and you say fine, but you're not fine, and they'll know, they'll never know that. I tell you, life is interesting, life's a journey. See this phone here? Let's say that I want to go to the phone, right? So it's like one step at a time, and you take steps in this direction, you take steps in that direction sort of get lost along the way and sometimes you fall down but I tell you there are some times in life where you fall down and you feel like you don't have the strength to get back up you sort of put a mask on your face when you come to school and pretend that everything's okay when it's not and you go home and lay in your bed when no one's looking at you when you don't have to impress anybody you're yourself and fear comes in you know the fear that you have as soon as you walk into the doors of your house maybe it's a broken home maybe you have doubt in your life maybe you don't know for sure what's going to be happening in the future and it scares you maybe you're about you maybe you're worried about what people think of you what people say about you just that fear paralyzes you and i just want to ask you today do you think It should be impossible for me to get back up, but it's not. You see, I will try 100 times to get up, and if I fail 100 times, if I fail and I give up, do you think that I'm ever going to get up? No. But if I fail, I try again and again and again. For as long as I try, there's always that chance of getting up. There's still hope. But I had to ask myself a couple questions. And the first question was really, who am I? Who am I? And it's funny how the friends around you sort of determine who you are. You change yourself. So you have a choice to know which step you're going to take today. The secret to success um there's a couple of elements that are important in success. Uh, first of all is your own level of expectation. 
Um, you also have to learn to be happy with what you achieve sometimes. It's impossible in life to always achieve exactly what you have in the back of your head. So you need to learn also to be happy with what you achieved, even if it's only half of what you had in mind at first. I like a quote of John Lennon, yeah, life's what's happening to you when you're busy making other plans. And that is what I keep telling my wife as well. And, and all a lot of people around me. You always expect something and then something along the way comes and then you have to alter your path again. And if you can learn to live with that, if you can be practical like that, then success is more easy, maybe. It's good to have a plan, but it's also good to, if you're working really hard and you're walking up against a door and you can't go through that door, then you, don't, you just find a, a, a back door. Just find your way around it. And that's just the way that life is. Sometimes you cannot get exactly what you want or what you had in the back of your mind. Yes, it's very important that you have to have a good work ethic. Nobody gets anywhere without hard work and you'll have good and bad days. Uh, even myself as a producer, I run into uh, disappointments almost on a daily basis because I try to work with artists that on the last moment pull back their song or, you know, you don't see that, you don't read that in the news, but it's a fact of the matter. And I think all artists have to deal with stuff like that. You don't get the set times you want, you don't get the billing you want, you don't get the hotel room that you requested. It's something you have to deal with and it, you know, defines your character how easy you are to deal with stuff like that. You know, life is, is, is a roller coaster ride for everybody. It has its ups and its downs. But if everything goes well, you'll have more ups than downs. And you'll remember the ups more than you'll remember the downs. But it's a fact of the matter that everybody, no matter if you're a big artist, a successful artist, or a successful businessman, everybody works hard to get somewhere. And everybody has a certain passion. And I want to stress that the word passion is probably the most important in that. You have to really, really, really want something. And I think in life, it's so much more easy if you are devoted and dedicated to something. If you like your job, no, not like your job, love your job, you'll be 200% good at it because you're passionate about it. So ask yourself on a daily basis, is what I'm doing right now, is it something I love? Because if you don't love what you're doing, you're actually wasting your time. You should stop doing what you do. You should try and search for something else. Because I'm convinced that if you don't love what you do, you're only doing at maybe at 50 or 70% of, of what you could do. And if you love what you do, you're really passionate about what you do, you love your job or you love your work or you love whatever you're doing, then you'll go for it 200%. And then you'll see that you can really excel. You can, you can reach stuff beyond what you expected you would. I mean, people always ask me, like, why do you do eight-hour DJ sets? It's because I love it, man. I want to play all this music. And then, it's physically, it's not healthy to not go to the bathroom for six, seven hours. And I do it because I just don't think about going to the bathroom. I just feel the need to to perform, I'm like, I'm in the zone, I'm in the moment, I wanna rock that crowd, and that's what I mean. You, you excel, you go beyond your, a human being can really achieve. Uh, it's like what Obi-Wan Kenobi said, you know, it's, if you can put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. If you really, if you truly are one of those people who commits a life to pursuing, to realizing a dream, you have to be a little crazy. John Balthazari says you have to be possessed. If you commit your entire life to a dream, you will find it. Because if you commit your everything, your entire being, there's only one of two possible outcomes. Number one, you'll find it, you will succeed. Number two, you'll die trying. commit to this, to commit everything to chasing that dream. It may guarantee you'll find that dream. It does not guarantee a happy or great life. Dreams are important. Having goals, ambition, these are the things that drive life. But there's only one determination, there's only one factor that makes you a success or does not make you a success. It's a binary. And that is, are you happy? Are you happy with the life that you live?
For all the people who might not consider themselves possessed, dreams matter, goals matter. And what they do is they serve as this guiding light that steers you through life. You keep your eyes fixed on that and life may take you in all of these crazy trajectories and along the way you'll find what makes you happy. That pursuit may lead you to a place you could have never imagined, but a place where you're very, very happy. How to take back your life when you're broken. Someone wrote in saying they've lost it all. They've lost money, relationships, connections to their family and their job, self-respect, right? They feel their whole life is falling apart right in front of them and they're scared. They feel lost like nobody's around to help. I'm going to tell you a very simple secret. It's okay to fall. Say it again, Ralph. It's okay to fall. You see, in this society, we have been told that we have to be perfect all the time. Do you know what this does to your mind, body, and soul? We now live with tremendous expectation to be somebody we are not. That is why you feel broken. Because you are trying to be fixed. In essence, be someone else. You aren't broken, even though you feel you are broken. Many times, we don't realize we can rewrite our story at any time. You're only on chapter one, baby, right? And yes, it's looking pretty grim, but you can erase that and write chapter one again, or you can wait for chapter two and realize that it's gonna get a whole lot better. You see, it's really in the hardest moments you learn the most about yourself. You're pushed to the limits. What are some of the words you are saying, right? Because some people say, my life is a mess. Do you know what that does to your subconscious mind? It makes you live a very messy life. A very messy life. But more so, your daily activities are going to be really messy. Because you have said that, the word is now bond, and that means you have to justify what you've just said through your daily actions. And what you think is broken may just be a temporary state. No, it is. Because this too shall pass. Today, I wanted to just really hit on something, successfully dealing with pain. I think you hear, you, you, you hear many stories and, and, and every story I just sat in the back room and listened to, I'm, I'm watching these people triumph and, and figure out ways to keep going. But how do you keep going? Why do you keep going? When the world says everything else is supposed to be opposite. Every time you come up to a challenge, you quit, you surrender, you give up, you give in. Every single thing I go through, I remember I was homeless and I draw from it. Every single time I'm going through pain, I remember that I've gone through pain since I was a kid. I draw from it. Recycle your pain. Get something from it. You're already in pain. Use it. Do something with it. Allow it to take you to the next level. Allow your pain to push you to greatness. There's two sides of pain that I don't think a lot of people 
really understand. Right? There's, there's one side of pain that's the suffering and the discomfort side of pain. But then there's another side of pain that's called effort. It's called glory. It's called if you can find a way to push through pain, there's something greater on the other side of it. And, 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 and if you never tap into it, it's because the first time you felt it, you back off. The first time you felt ah, that burn, the first time you felt that ah, it's, it's too much. That's why a bunch of us give up so much in life so quickly. That's why kids have a problem finishing things in today's time. Because as soon as they feel a small bit of discomfort, of things ain't right, oh, they're gone. I can't do it no more. But suppose I told you the greatest pain of my life is the reason I'm standing here today. See, sometimes we think the pain is what controls us. It's actually our subconscious mind that if we ever tapped into that, that's what dictates most of our lives. Because see, pain, pain is tricky because if you don't control pain, it'll control you. Think about what we do the moment we feel that, right? That's back to the two sides of faith, the, the two sides of pain. See, at that point, I feel like a victim. And I feel like, oh man, why me? You know, and, and when I feel, I remember laying on the ground. And I said, Lou, ain't nobody out here gonna help you get up. What makes you get up? when you fall down? What makes your mentality change if there's a great situation or there's a bad situation? How do you dictate that based off the level of pain? Because I think that's what we're getting in trouble at. And so when I started cycling, when I started going to see these doctors, I realized that I turned my greatest pain into my greatest achievement. Well, sometimes your greatest pain it ain't even about you. It's about a greater purpose. That if you can find a way to push through, that if you can find a way to not make it about you, learn, learn to appreciate But in the end, the most important thing is what's the purpose of your life? Why are you here? We gotta look at what makes you really do what you do. Everything on earth has a purpose and you do too. That purpose provides an inner drive that once you tap into it can give your life immense fulfillment. It'll also give you certainty. Cause you know right now we're in a world that's changing so rapidly that virtually every time you turn around, you hear about something else that's changing. And I hear so much excitement, and I also hear so much fear about the pace of change. I mean, we've all talked about changes happening so rapidly now, and paradigm shifts, and all that stuff has become so overused at this point that we've become numb to it. But it's true. Never in the history of the world have things changed so rapidly. So you need to find something that's eternal inside of yourself. That no matter what changes on the surface, this part of you does not change. It's the part you come back to, the part that guides you, the part that really makes you fulfilled. You know, each moment we've got to be able to find some sense of meaning for our lives, something that is significant, something that is useful. And we all know this is not a new conversation. See, all of us in life have to have a reason to be here. If all you're doing out there is going out and trying to achieve goals, and then you achieve them, then I'm sure you've run into that trip-up wire that says, okay, I've achieved the goal, and now what? Right? You achieve the goal, and your brain says, is this all there is? See, the purpose of a goal, as I've shared with you so many times, is not to achieve the goal. The purpose of the goal is what it makes of us as people, who we become. 
Ultimately, though, we have to have a sense that who we even have become has some kind of meaning. Without that, there's not a reason to live. There's not a reason to get up. There's not a reason to go out there and make it happen. What's really controlling this man's life is fear. When people say they're cynical or they're pessimistic, what they're really screaming out to you is, I'm scared out of my mind. <laughs> I'm afraid to dream again. I'm afraid to think about what's possible. I'm afraid to really put myself on the line. And I'm going to go for something. I'm going to stand for something. I'm going to put myself in line in a relationship or my business or my vision to make a difference in the world. Because you know what? Maybe at one time this person did that. Maybe they tried it several times and it didn't work and they got pain and pain and pain. Pretty soon they didn't want the pain so they stopped dreaming, they stopped envisioning, they stopped coming up with meaning. Instead, they try to keep themselves away from the pain by saying, well, there's no meaning in it all anyway. But unfortunately, that gives you the ultimate pain because it gives you a life without meaning. And no one can live a life that's fulfilled without a sense of meaning. See, we've been put here for a reason. The question is why? And the answer, I think, is different for every one of us is different for me than it is for you, and yet it's the same. Every one of us has been put here. Every one of us is unique and different and special. And I believe our creator, if I may use the word God, if I may, God has put you here for a reason. The question is, what is it? God does not create things without a purpose. Everything on earth serves a purpose. Why are you here? What are you here to do? What are you here to become, to create, and to give? These are some of the most significant questions that you can answer in your life. And even when you answer them, I'm sure that as your life expands, you'll come up with better answers as you get more experience and you get closer in touch with your own innermost being and maybe closer in touch with your creator as well. I'm really going to the essence of giving your life what you deserve, which is knowing that there are no mistakes, knowing that every little thing you do has a consequence it can be a positive consequence if you choose it. The most powerful thing that has consequence in your life, though, is the thing we talk about so often, but i got to say it again, and that is what's really ultimately shaping our lives are our decisions. Let me explain something to you, people. When you show up late... When you are out of shape and your job requires you to be in shape. When you are not working as hard as you know you can work on the job. When you are giving people attitude because they're giving you an attitude. It's like a cycle of death. It ain't gonna stop. If your goal is to work your way up the success ladder if you're going to have a problem with everybody who has a problem with you, do you think that that's, that's going to help you to get to the top even faster? You know how many times I got to laugh at shit that ain't funny? You know how, to how many times I got to go to dinners and events and places and be around people that I don't fuck with at all? But guess what? If it's a game of survival, we're going to get from where we are to where we're trying to be. Your pride and your ego is out of fucking control. Your pride in your ego has been killing your career growth. Your pride in your ego and your attitude has compromised the altitude of your career. You know better, but you're deciding to not do better. You are a lazy, unprofessional, mean attitude having motherfucker. And yet, when things are not happening good for you, when things are not coming your way, when things are not happening as fast as you want them to happen, you blame everybody else and what they're doing and saying, and you completely disown everything that you're doing to contribute to your career, not going to another level. I refuse to be aware of something I could be and should be doing better and purposely decide to not do it. I refuse. That's just like inviting broke into your life. Your pride and your ego has stopped you from being thirsty. You're in your own way. You are the reason your career is not on the next level. Nobody else but you. You know better. But the question is, are you willing to do better?
Stop running around acting as if you don't have a choice. You do have a choice. You do have a choice. You decided that those are your friends. You decided that those are the people that you want to spend time with. You decided this is what you wanted to do with your day. Stop running around acting as if you have nothing to do with the people, things, and situations in your life. Feeling good isn't just an opportunity. Feeling good is a responsibility that we all have for ourselves. I was barely a teenager the first time I tried to kill myself. If I knew then what I know now, well, it probably wouldn't have changed very much. And it probably wouldn't have changed very much because sometimes it doesn't matter what you know, what you feel just takes over. Death isn't just of the physical body. Death is of the ego, ego death. A lot of young people, and I share this with you because, again, you might find yourself in this place. A lot of young people, a lot of people in general who have a hankering for death, who think I need to kill myself, uh, suicide, thoughts of suicide. Those are not wrong. Those feelings aren't wrong. To want to die to yourself, to want to commit suicide is not wrong. It's just that you're looking at it the wrong way. It is not a physical suicide. It's not a physical death. It is a character or an ego death. If you're watching this right now and you have the feeling that you want to kill yourself or you have the feeling that I, I want to die, it's good. Just know that you're looking at it the wrong way. You must die. Your ego must die. Who you are today is no longer resourceful for who you're going to be. For you to fulfill your greatest purpose, here on this planet, in this lifetime, you have to have multiple deaths to immature versions of yourself so that you can be reborn as a stronger version of yourself. That's how the process goes. Things in life happen in this cyclical fashion. Failure is a part of success. You must fail. You must break down to build up. You must go down to grow up. A truly successful man, man takes that wound and grows something of a better version of himself. Right? This is this is this is the growing stronger process. This is the becoming a stronger version of yourself process. Uh, and some people, without the perspective, they allow they allow the wound to fester. How many people have a injury, psychological, emotional, an abuse, or physical, or born with, and they allow it to allow it to destroy them? So many of us want to be successful for our own narcissistic desires, right? So knowing that the work that I do is not just about Elliot Hulse, me growing in popularity and fame does nothing for eternity, for the world, for when I'm gone, when I'm dead. Sure, these videos will be here. But if I do these videos so that I can put more money in my pockets, well, who gives a fuck? But if I do the work that I do with the intent on making this a better place, unifying mankind, believing in the strongest version of you and you and you and you, and giving you the tools that you could then take the strongest version of you and empower other people, now it's a virus, right? It's a love virus. Feel good about that. Think in terms of your particular wound, even if you're dealing with one right now, and know this. Whatever struggle you're dealing with, whatever challenge you're facing, whatever injury, whatever wound you have right now, it is a birth opportunity. It's an opportunity to, like the female, go in and allow the internal processes to put the pieces together where a new you can be rebirthed. It is the principle of death and rebirth. It is the principle of going down so that you can rise up.
you will never be Olympic material. Some people would rather kill your dream than see you succeed. It's later in life, as you look back on your life, the windows of opportunity has closed. Your ability is no longer present. And you think back that you could have been great. You don't have to be phenomenally skilled. But if you are phenomenally will, meaning that you put forth effort every single day, you will win. You cannot be stopped. There is no obstacle that can stop you when you will not stop. There is no obstacle that can come before you if you say, I refuse to quit. Yeah, I used to think once you got successful, you could, ah, you're successful. And it, okay, you now you can kind of just relax a little bit. And, but that's not the case at all. You have to pedal even harder. You have to work even more. Um, there are more opportunities that need more uh, time and dedication. Uh, and in order to do them well, you have to uh, really, really uh, hunker down and do the hard work. The really interesting thing about achieving some of your goals in life is you realize that dreams are possible and they're, they're attainable. And uh, once you reach some of these goals, you're more likely to try to reach others. You have a good chance at making some of your wildest dreams come true. Um, most people don't even try sadly. Don't even try sadly. Don't even try sadly. Don't even try sadly. Most people um, try and then stop or give up. You might be smarter. Your family might come from privilege. Your daddy might own a company, but you will not outwork me. Very few people try and try and try or do and do and do and do and never give up. And those are the people that that ultimately succeed and win. You will not get up before eight. You will not get up before six. I will outrep you. You push up every day. I'm going. I'm doing more and more each day. I'm trying to do them till I can't do them no more. I'm doing sit ups every day. I will outwork you. I always believe that the, the bridge between reality and a dream is work. Um, and I always, in moments of despair and doubt and dark days, uh, focus on, on the work. I show up and I work and I work and I work and I work. You know, what I would tell people that are individuals out there is, uh, you know, you're the ones who inherit the earth. Um, and, and believe in yourself and be patient and be as different as you want to be. Uh, you have every right to do that. Uh, and it may be difficult and lonely at times, but there is no greater privilege than owning yourself. The indomitable will, if you have a belief, you can do something. You will not have more drive than I have, more passion than I have, and I'll beat you every single day because I got passion. You will not wake up in the morning because you're spoiled. So many people out there um, fail, not because they don't have the ability, it's because they don't have the heart to go through adversity. tell you something that every successful person has to do including you believe it or not every successful person in this world has jumped I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that you eventually you are going to have to jump you cannot just exist in this life you have got to try to live if you are waking up thinking that it's got to be more to your life than it is, man, believe that it is. Believe in your heart of hearts that it is. But to get to that life, you're going to have to jump. 
when you become the right person. What I mean by the right person is, once you identify who you are and you begin to separate yourself from the masses, and you begin to see your individuality, when you begin to see your talents, when you begin to see your personal skills, when you were created, you were created with a specific purpose, a specific design. I don't care if you was born and you know your parents didn't claim you, you still special. So I need you to be you. Number one, you gotta catch this. Number one, value. All right, when you become who you are, when you become the person that you were created to be, designed to be who you were designed to be, when you become an individual, what you do is you, 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 you take yourself and you start separating yourself from other people. What you need to do to get to a place in your life where you blow up is one, to become the right person. Because when you become the right person, what you do is you show your worth, you show your value. When you become the right person, when you become the right person, what you do is you start separating yourself from other people. You begin to have a certain uniqueness. As long as you follow following other people, as long as you're being a copycat, you will never ever be the best copycat in the world, but you will be the best you could be. You got to take that gift that's packed away on your back. You got to jump off that cliff and pull that cord. I dare you, number two, to invest in yourself. That's right, I dare you to invest time. I dare you to be alone. I dare you to spend an hour getting to know yourself. If you don't ever use it, you're gonna just go to work. And if you're getting up going to work on a job every day that you hate going to, that ain't living, man. You just existed. At one point in time, you ought to see what living's like. But the only way to see what living's like, you gotta jump. And here the problem. Let me tell you something. Your parachute will not open right away. I, I'm sorry. I, I wish I could tell you it did, but it don't. When you jump, it's not going to open right away. You're going to hit them rocks. But eventually, eventually, the parachute has to open.